Usually, I would have reviewed the Philly Appearance Love Stock only considering it's the only Valentine's Day episode I can review for Valentine's Half Month 5. But considering that Codename Kids Next Door's episode Operation Future has similar themes with this episode, it's accurate to compare the episodes because let's be honest. We all know full well that Love Struck is one of the worst episodes when it comes to the golden age of the Fairy Odd Parents. And considering that Operation Future did the elements correct while Love Struck did everything wrong when it comes to the characters, I really felt like that after watching Operation Future, it really shows it knows how to handle the boys and girls Gendos, knowing full out that what they did with the Gendos in Lovestruck is really offensive. In Operation Future, number 4 goes to a boarding school that he went through multiple times in the past, but this time it's a lot more different compared to the previous, previous times he went there. Miss Margaret, in the present of this episode, wants to take over the world by turning every single boy into girls. And all honestly, compared to what they did in Love Struck, just goes to show that they totally know how to not, to not make this episode completely offensive. In Love Struck, after failed to get the attention from Trixie after seeing a song, Timmy makes a wish to separate the boys and girls on off with a giant wall in order to separate both genders. Usually I would talk more about the story itself, but judging that these two stories are different with a huge similarity when it comes to boys and girls, I think it really shows onto why I never got back to the fairy odd parents unlike old unlike cold name Kids Next Door. Because when Tibby makes the wish, it also causes a lot of wars to be break in the wars. And in all honesty, the fact that this has never been brought up and it's only excuse to drive the story forward, I really don't even know what the consequences that Timmy would have gotten if Jordan found out about this. If it wasn't obvious enough, Cupid is one of the reasons on to why I do not like this episode in the slightest, mainly of how he's portrayed. For this episode's excuse to have him be around is to spread love everywhere. However, not the love that the people wanted, the love that he provides for the people around him. In all honestly, the fact that the last time I talked about Fairy Odd Parents episode centering around him is where he tried to separate Cosmo and Wanda. Look, in certain cases, it's somewhat understandable on to why Timmy will never be Trixie's boyfriend. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's mostly the age, age gap or something, or the fact that Trixie wants to be around popular people since that Timmy is an average kid. Unfortunately, I just don't understand why Cupid thinks that what he does makes everything happy knowing full well of what Timmy does just makes everything worse. Like, I understand of what Timmy did is wrong, but at the same time, he wouldn't done it to begin with if he wasn't in this scenario where Cupid, where Cupid just pushes him down. Usually, Timmy snapped when Trixie rejected him as usual. But considering that the infamous scenes in this episode is the stereotypes itself, I'm starting to convince that whatever something bad ends up happening for Timmy before and during the wish, I'm going to assume that his average life just isn't the same and it's really miserable compared to the other characters that I've seen in other cartoons. Not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but at the same time, it's still worth for debate. Now, don't get me wrong, there may be stereotypes in Operation Future, but at the same time, knowing full well that the boarding school that number 4 went to, while well, it's being taken over by girls, it just really shows that they're really trying everything to make this whole 
boys versus girls thing work out for the episodes for the episodes writing. Because as far as I'm concerned, if the failure of parents ever tackled the idea of boys versus girls, if it did tackle the idea, I can guarantee you it wouldn't be a good episode. Since that number four is sexist, which is part of his character, I really felt like that his situation in this episode, especially in some of the episodes where he's surrounded by girls, even if he goes a little too far when he's around number three, is really understandable. I mean, I can understand that number four can be unlikable at times, but the more you think about it, his presence in this entire episode just showcases his character onto why he cannot stand girls. Like, the fact that this boarding school is different compared to the previous boarding schools that you went to in the past, it really shows that he is so confident to handle situations like this on his own without the help of his friends. Granted, he ended up getting the help from his friends towards the end, but I'll get to those details later. Margaret, who is the antagonist of this episode, it really shows that her motivations make a whole lot of sense compared to Cupid from the Fairy Parents. I mean, you can make the argument that she is extremely petty and mostly stereotypical, but at the same time, knowing full well that she was in the position where he got bossed around by his brother, by her brother, all the while that she took a long time to focus on the future for our girls, I have to admit that I have to give her credit for actually trying to make a future a better place for girls, but at the same time, a terrible future for all boys alike. Seriously, just seeing number 1, 2, and 5 being turned into girls, even though the number 5 was already a girl, but turned into a much girly girl, yeah. It would be a really devastating future involving girls taking over the entire planet without a single boy in sight. But in all honesty, it would still be a better world compared to what the Fairy parents did by separating the girls and boys, or men and women, whatever you prefer. Because in the other side of the world involving women, it's mainly being better than man. In all honesty, that's not really the case. Granted, it's one thing that women deserves respect as much as man, but at the same time, whenever I look at the other side of the world involving women, all I can think of is... It's really trying so hard to make you convinced that women are really important, while men are the opposite. Let me tell you. If any of you guys grew up with this episode when it aired for the first time, around the time while cartoons were mostly at those standards before the likes of... Adventure Time, Steven Universe, among others, in the future, change animation as a whole. Did you actually like this episode? I'm being really honest with you, because when I first watched this episode, I didn't even enjoy it. If I really spent my entire life in the other side of the world, completely populated by men and men only, it wouldn't be fun. I'm just saying this because for how this episode executes the whole separation between men and women, I don't even think that the women themselves will enjoy their own separation from the men. Because as far as I'm concerned, whenever I look at both sides of men and women in this episode, it's honestly very clear that this show seriously needs to take itself seriously when it comes to elements like this. And the fact that this was airing in the early 2000s, I'm going to assume that this was around a time where Butch Hartman instantly had creative freedom completely and believe me when I say this, he had too much, com he had too much creative freedom through the beginning and the end of this show. And when it comes to Danny Phantom Tough Puppy, along with the other cartoon that I can't remember, I'm going to assume that Nickelodeon instantly favored Butch Hartman way too much when it comes to these ideals. 
And considering that this episode is trying way too hard to make me side with Cupid by making me feel sympathetic towards him, it really fails. In all honesty, if an episode like this happened right now, it would have been a lot more worse than when it ended, ended up being if when it aired back in 2002 or 2003. Let me just say this right now that love in this episode is honestly non-existent and it's only there because without Cupid, it would just probably be the same generic love that we've seen from time to time. But since we're talking about the separation of boys and girls, let's get back to Operation Future. Well, after number 4 failed his mission, 75 years into the future, we see what the lives of boys are like with girls taking over the entire planet. In all honesty, this just, this just goes to show that this episode knows how to handle the stereotypes correctly compared to what Love Struck did terribly. Not only Number 4 and Margaret are still going against each other, but Sally, who is the granddaughter of Number 3, decides to join forces with the boys in order to take down the gores. You know, if there was ever a chance, well... Codename Kids Next Door will ever have a mini series in the same fashion as Adventure Time had when it comes to elementals, stakes, and islands. It would have been interesting to see a mini series involving boys versus girls. I'm just being really honest with you of how this episode capitalizes this ideal. Just goes to show that the people behind this episode and this show and and this show itself really knew what they were doing. Since they were in the point of view that the girls are taking over the entire planet while the boys themselves are camouflaging themselves, it really shows that if a boy was around the girls, they were, they were dealt with, with some serious consequences if they disobey any of the orders from any of the girls. And I'm being really honest with you whenever I think about these ideas in further detail. I'm saying this because when the girls had the upper hand against the boys, it actually feels accurate because it's 75 years into the future, all the while they're in love struck, it only happened in the spam of either a day. And then in, for me personally, it really shows that the girls are becoming a lot more superior over the boys since that the boarding school that number 4 had went through had a plan all along in order to take over the entire planet to make the entire population into gores. Granted, it may be questionable of how the future will have been like when it comes to procreation, but in all honesty, what Lovestruck did when it comes to procreation, it really lacks the meaning of romantic relationships. Like, you can make the argument that there is no relationships in Operation Future, which the future will have been a lot more devastating, but at the same time, it was done differently. While this, the only way for everyone to get back to the way they were is for Timmy to use the equipment that Cupid has in order to turn everyone around them in love with each other. So, Timmy is just enforcing love all around him in order to turn the planet back to the way it is. You know, if Timmy ever got older and ever had a girlfriend who's willing to marry him, I don't even know what his life would have been like if he ever learned the meaning of love itself. Because as far as I'm concerned, Lin So and Rita, despite being terrible parents, are good people when it comes to being in love with each other. Like, I would try to understand that the meaning of love in this show may have different varieties, but at the same time when it comes to this episode, it really feels like that the only way for love to happen is for Cupid to take care of everything, but also it needs to be played by his rules. You know, the fact that I'm talking about Procreate in two shows that are catered to kids really shows that both of these episodes have, ch have changed over time once you get older and older. 
if I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, this whole Tuli being in love with Timmy, I understand that Tuli has feelings of her own considering that her sister is Vicky and she's dealing with tough times and there was even an episode where Timmy is willing to give his val his fairy parents to Tuli during her birthday, but no matter what, it really feels like Timmy is only doing this to either chill Tuli up, but at the same time he's fully aware that he just can't be able to take it. it. It just really hurts him in order to do good deeds towards people that he isn't into completely. You know, the more I realize that some of these characters don't return as the series progresses, it really shows that with this being a 2000s cartoon, they clearly didn't know what to do with the other characters once the 2010s came around. Granted, Season 6 is basically the turning point of the fairy parents completely back in 2008. But whenever I look at Timmy's friends along with the other characters, they were not memorable as I remembered. Not to say that they were terrible, but at the same time, it's, it's just difficult to see Timmy being paired with these types of characters. Like, Chester and AJ I can understand, but when it comes to 2D, not so much. Which is why that this ending isn't really good. In all honesty, it just really shows that Timmy is being forced to be paired with someone because of Cupid's point of view. And regardless of what I said about Timmy not being with Tootie, not being with Trixie because of an age gap or possibly because Trixie is just too popular to hang out with average kids. I just think at this point that this show's way of pairing Timmy with a certain girl just doesn't work out for me completely. Which is why I barely ship in the older shows involving this, Spongebob, and including Jimmy Neutron. I think it's no surprise that even if I do not ship in codename Kids Next Door, I still enjoyed this episode way better than the Fairy Odd Parents episode. If anything, it really shows that you do not need love in order to see the future of what it could have been, knowing full well that the girls will remain victorious over the boys. And since it betrays the genders of boys and girls much more better compared to Lovestruck, I really have to admit that the ending itself is a great indication of boys and girls getting along much more better compared to what the fairy out parents did. And in all honesty, the fact that this episode is a Valentine's Day episode just makes it even more worse. Especially since that I did not enjoy any of the songs in this episode alone. Granted, I'm not being positive when it comes to the style of the fairy out parents, but I never liked the musical numbers whatsoever. You may like it, but at the same time I don't. But you can agree with me that the songs in this episode is just bad. If I'm ever going to see an episode involving the same elements as Operation Future or even Lovestruck, I can guarantee you it would have been done a lot more better knowing full well that these were these episodes were made in the 2000s while we're in the 2020s. Granted, I could make the argument that I have already talked about it when it comes to the Camp Lasno's picnic episode, but at the same time, there's always possibilities of a future cartoon would tackle an idea like this. I'm giving Operation Future an 8 out of 10, while Love's Truck gets a 3 out of 10.